Hello and welcome to episode 68 of AFC Files Still We Rise. This is our Football Manager 2020 YouTube save and today the coasters play both Aston Villa and Norwich in successive games before the start of the World Cup in 2022. There's a lot to get through but I'll sort of go through that as the first game takes place, certainly as we prepare for it. Today's formation sees Brian Fiabima dropped, our right winger. He's rested, I should say, not dropped, that's a bit cruel. He is a bit uh, suffering from fitness issues. So Jovan Malcolm, who we signed from West Brom after three successive loan seasons with us, uh, he comes in on the right. De Groot is on the left. Everybody else is fairly standard now. Mitch Walker back in goal following his bout of injuries and Barry Douglas is at left back. He scored a couple of goals uh, as of late, so he certainly retains his place over Scott Duxbury. We are at home today. It's at Mill Farm against Aston Villa. In other news, we have played three fixtures since last we were on YouTube. I predicted a win, a loss and a draw, one of each. We played Palace, MK Dons and Reading. It was a 4-1 loss to Crystal Palace. Top of the league, fairly expected, could do nothing against them. Then we had a win at home against MK Dons and, crucially, a win away at Reading. That has left us actually level on points with second place Norwich. In managerial news, Spenny the Penny, my assistant, he has been appointed by Dover to save them from relegation. I wish him all the best. In his stead, Craig Short has been brought in as my new assistant manager. Ryan Giggs has been sacked by Borough. In fact, there's a whole host of managerial moves at the minute. Ian Holloway has taken the job at Derby, departing from Hull, so that position is now vacant. QPR have appointed Nigel Pearson, trying to spearhead their push towards the playoffs, and there are vacant posts, not in addition to Hull, at Blackburn Rovers and obviously Middlesbrough due to uh, Ryan Giggs getting the pink slip. All of those clubs, I should say, are about 18th or under in the championship. Aston Villa, however, are managed now by Ralph Hessenhutl. Uh, the former Southampton boss has uh, made his way over to the Midlands. With the World Cup about to take place, Fylde will be represented uh, the Coasters will get a player there. That is Ashkan Dejaga for Iran. He has been called up to the World Cup squad. And a final bit of news just sees another injury for Giovanni Dos Santos. I mean, he seems to be made from bloody glass at the minute. But I backed him. I've given him every chance to justify his big wage that he's on with us. Uh, putting him up front as our target man. And subsequently, he's got himself injured. And the opening goal scored at Mill Farm. Sorry, not Mill Farm. We're at Globe Arena, aren't we? It's Kenneth De Groot on loan from Manchester United. Burke and Jovan Malcolm. Bit of persistence down the right. Jovan with the big cross to the back post where De Groot cushions the ball home with a nice little volley there for the on loan at Manchester United winger. From their Premier League days, Aston Villa still have the likes of John McGinn, but I suspect, I haven't checked, that Jack Grealish has moved on. Matt Target also there at left back. He's got plenty of Premier League pedigree. Corner ball for Aston Villa. It's coming in from McGinn. And there it's cleared off the line. Good play, and then filed earn a free kick from Nicola Moro. Young lad there. It's a throw into Villa. They've really taken the initiative, I think, since the goal. And it's through to McGinn. Oh, it's a deflection or a save. One of the two, but it's a corner. He's oh, running the show, is the Scotsman John McGinn. Really do need to step up to him as West Brom lead. Through Zay Luis, uh, he scored against us earlier in the season. Barry Douglas with the corner, and it's another goal. 
Cesc Fabregas, Premier League legend, Spanish legend, assisted by De Groot. In fact, it was a deflected uh, ball, wasn't it? Our favourite Irish player, Rick O'Shea, getting involved there. And it just fell to the Spaniard, just to stab home from close in. Another strike there. Oh, it's so close. But Perkins with the ball for Villa. It's going to come back though, isn't it? We are running the show here. Apart from again, obviously. He seems to be uh, doing pretty well for the Villa. De Groot now. It's going to keep coming, isn't he? Lewis into Fabregas. Big, long effort. Long shot from him, not finding the back of the net. Paul Gallagher, our other midfielder, so we tend to have rotated this season between Tom Walker, who's come up through the ranks with us, come up through from the National League. Him, Cesc Fabregas and Paul Gallagher, former Preston North End standout, has been uh, our central midfield, Nick Horton. Not really getting it looking, if we're honest, uh, and he is not happy about that. However, uh, Paul Gallagher has now announced his retirement. So we think that Horton is going to step up next season. Uh, there won't be a next season for me because I'm not going to play the game. But uh, in the game, Horton will take over from Gallagher and be part of our uh, three in midfield. Burke with a driving run now. Malcolm picks it up. Fabregas recycles. It's going to go wide to Burke. And again, it's blocked. Now here come Villa on the counter-attack. Can we do anything? Don't tackle him. Tame effort in terms of a cross there from, I think it was Samata, one of the two strikers they're playing. So Villa playing quite a conservative 3-5-2, I'd say. Swansea lead against Crystal Palace. That's big news for the rest of the league. As Palace are top, as gr it's a great tackle by Adam Lewis. And we need one again here. McGinn. He's on the ball. Perkins out wide. It's going to come in from target. It's a header by McGinn, but it is over the crossbar. As we approach uh, 55 minutes, time to consider some substitutions, really. I would like to give Ashken de Jager a bit of a send-off uh, here at Mill Farm. As he's going to represent us in the uh, World Cup. Imagine that, an AFC file player. At the World Cup, he comes on for Javan Malcolm, who had picked up a booking. That's the only change that we're going to make ahead of 60 minutes. And there's the veteran winger, De Jager, on for Malcolm, who's described as a striker. Hmm, not sure about that one, football manager. Uh, Samata, oh, he puts it wide. As Bristol City, Andreas Weiman. Putting them ahead against Stoke. It's now 3-3 Swansea and Palace. What a game that is. Down there in Wales. Norwich lead against MK. Yeah, Norwich. Uh, Florarin Balogun. Uh, he's done actually really well for them this season. I think he was a young player of the month. Uh, for October or November. One of the two. Uh, not shocked to see him score. And certainly... Um, MK Dons conceding. James Tavernier is on now at right back as West Brom are in a 2 0 lead. Bristol City, a spanking Stoke. Casey Palmer with their third. A third goal without reply against the Potters. Barry Douglas goes into the book. No surprise there. And I think we'll just make a very late change. Just with a few minutes to go, I'm going to bring off ball and bring on our young striker. Uh, Sheldon Green. Just to give him a bit more experience. Last season he got quite a lot of football, especially towards the end of the year when it looked like promotion was secured. This season, can't afford to play him. We are right there in the thick of the playoff picture, unexpectedly, as Rodriguez plays the ball in. De Groot chases Rodriguez again. It's a great save by Mitch Walker in goal. I've been tracking him for three years and he is paying dividends for us. Can he keep a clean sheet against Villa? No, he can't. Indiana Vasilev, substitute. Getting on the score sheet. I mean, it's, uh, it's after time, really. Three minutes were indicated. I know it's a minimum. 
uh, there he is just the defense went to sleep slightly with a great chance we are over time now blow the whistle referee mr brammel there it is a 2-1 win against aston villa keeps us right in place efforts were indeed excellent i agree with craig short new assistant manager as you can see there nigel pearson taking over at qpr I wonder what uh, what improvement he will bring to the fortune of the r's and i can just see that surely top scorer in the competition never have i heard that in my life we are now finally putting a bit of breathing space between us and seventh place that's the one i always look at when we're in the playoffs uh, 40 points on the board level with norwich but an inferior goal difference Preston 32 points that's eight behind and in fact shall we see what happened at Swansea no it ended 3-3 three, three. Cash Rowland and Kearney for Palace Ferrara Eze and a own goal contributing the ones for Swansea great play there and you will just notice in the form table Bristol City are a team to watch that's the lower end there you go it's bristol swansea and then ourselves with west brom and palace making up the top five interesting so that was our first game of this two game episode because the world cup's coming up i want to feature both games just before that takes place so thank you for joining me for this half there's going to be a short break around 10 seconds and then we will be back for the norwich game it's a way we're probably not going to win that one just a warning don't set your expectations too high as you can see here just before we go Ash Jagger getting the call up for Iran well done to him I'll see you in a moment And welcome back. Today is a day that the Coasters take on Norwich City away at Carrow Road in the second game of our double episode. We're the last to play on uh, this Saturday, the 5th of November. But already there have been some quite surprising results. Crystal Palace, top of the league, losing 1 0 to Aston Villa, who we just beat a few days ago. Following up their draw with Palace was Swansea with a loss. To Nottingham Forest. Meanwhile Stoke, who you might remember were well beaten, they beat Hull and Middlesbrough lost to West Brom. Bristol City, who had gone on that unbeaten run, you may remember, they've got another win against Birmingham. So here we go. We haven't changed very much in terms of the squad. The only change I am going to make is that Brian Fiabima is back after a game out so he sat out just to regain a bit of fitness uh, no reason though why he shouldn't come straight back in this one possibly might hurt they're a very good side and uh, we're probably going to struggle a little bit against Norwich if we tell the truth Norwich are up there in second place at the minute, but with Palace suffering a couple of bad results, a draw and a loss in their last two has sort of opened the door for Norwich to close the gap. Of course, they've opened it for ourselves as well, given that we are level with Norwich, uh, second and third, but you, there's quality in their squad. I mean, Sam Byram's on the bench. That shows you, doesn't it? Zimmerman at the back, he's pretty solid. Cantwell still there. Balogun, I think he's a top scorer in the division at the minute. And then Vidal? Aliu Vidal. Never heard of him, but he's worth 6.25 million. 33 years old. None of my squad are worth that. Okay. Uh, the uh, the pre-match predictions are pretty much all that Norwich are going to tear us a new one. Here at Carrow Road. Let's see how that goes. 
Uh, I'd rather avoid a big loss going into the international break, if we're honest, because uh, it just festers. We've all been part of games, whether that's Sunday League or watching our team play where they've lost. It just stays with you for a few days. It just makes you feel a bit down, and I really don't want that for the next, I think it's about a month that everybody's away, possibly more, possibly six weeks before we resume. Uh, and that will be on YouTube uh, as we resume the league. So look forward to that one. But already Norwich are all over us like a rash. Five shots on goal, just two on target. Uh, that's going to go up now to six and two. Uh, but filed coming back, a couple of shots ourselves. Nothing worthy though of a highlight. By this point, we were in quite a good position against Aston Villa. I don't think that's going to be replicated against City. As Fia Beamer, the on loan man from Chelsea, picks up a booking late in the first half. Not one highlight. Is it broken? The laptop is still whirring like a helicopter on takeoff, so I'm going to say no. Uh, but obviously nothing much of interest happening. Let's see if we can't spark our team into life. Now I'm going to take off Cesc Fabregas. He was suffering a bit in terms of his fitness. I'm going to bring on Paul Gallagher, uh, often his replacement. And I'm going to encourage the boys just once more. As here we go, it's a throw into Fylde. Barry Douglas, De Groot, but it's cut out by Norwich. And look, they're on the counter. Balogun, he's going to play the ball across. Cantwell with the finish. Yeah, nothing really that uh, was unexpected there. Balogun, best striker in the league, I think. Plays it right across. And then back post, Cantwell. Ah, oh, good control to put him in. Just beats Luke Burke, all ends up, and then fires beyond Mitch Walker. Really good goal. And there you go, that's what a highlight can do for you. As Files come back through Fia Beamer, he's going to get into the box. Fires wide. Better options there, Fia Beamer. David Ball and De Groot, both in close proximity. Gallagher with the shot. Zimmerman blocks. We've not got one on target yet. I mean, let's hope we can change that. Throw in by Barry Douglas. He goes back to Shotton. Lewis to Walker. Fia Beamer. Now Burke on the overlap. Oh, it's a strike. Selfish. Lumley there with the save. Uh, but it was a shot on target. Let's be fair. As uh, Norwich now build their attack with Mann at the back post. Barry Douglas with the tackle and it's cleared away. But I think Zimmerman will get that one. No, he won't. David Ball takes it. Is he going to play in? Oh, it's Lumley with a great save. Unexpected there. Corner kick. Sort of an air kick it looked like. Lewis all the way back to uh, Burke. I think that was in defence. So we are just going to uh, freshen things up, as Norwich are, to be honest. I think we're going to freshen things up in midfield. We're going to bring on De Jager for De Groot. Another farewell performance, but I might just swap over uh, Fia Beamer. As somehow Sheldon Green's gone to the pitch. Let's just undo that. There we go. Switch for your beam over. In terms of ball up front, not many options. I didn't really plan for this, did I? Hmm. Let's give Sheldon Green a run. Go on, lad. So there we are, we've made our full three substitutions before the 65th minute. That always goes well. No, 
Norwich playing a uh, 4 2 3 1. Mm. Not the most attacking formation. Um, although they do have four in that final third. So if you can get in behind, there should be room. But it's not unexpected to be losing 1 0 to Norwich at Carrow Road, given that the players they've got on staff. But that's di dismal to lose the ball there. And Cooper plays it back to the goalkeeper. Good ball to Campwell. Good distribution there. And there is Mann at the back post. Mann certainly onside before getting a shot off. Saved by Mitch Walker. We have had two shots on target, we should say, as well. Uh, earlier as we struggled. But um, I mean, Norwich, if Balogun and Campwell should be absolutely dominating. Those two are better than the championship. Balogun has scored a lot of goals this season. And Cantwell there on the left uh, seems to have uh, done well. Shadow Green's got pulled groin. Lucky boy. As Luke Burke picks up a yellow card from referee Craig Pawson. Making an appearance in a gale here at Carrow Road. Uh, it's a late attack from Norwich. Are they going to play in? It's Cantwell again. And there's Balogun with the effort. But Mitch Walker stood up to it. Stood tall and diverted the ball away from the goal. Still an attack though by Norwich. As Walker claims once again. He's been pretty good for us in goal. Suffered with injuries as of late. Uh, Rocco Reese has deputised for him. But uh, Walker is back. And there is the loss. Norwich going clear off us. In the Skybet Championship table. Uh, their efforts were excellent. Really? I feel like Craig Shaw is a little bit optimistic. But the boys react well. And that's what counts. They may look delighted. But a loss is a loss. So that leaves us, as you can see, 43 points for Norwich. 44 for Crystal Palace. So they've closed the gap. Our cells are three back from uh, the Canaries. That's right. Looking at the badge, it is the Canaries. Three points there. That's put us on 40. We're now just five points clear of Preston in seventh. Yeah. I mean, I'll take it at this stage of the season because now there is a big gap. The next time that we play will be... It's the end of December? Yeah, there you go. Our next game is the 26th of December. That's longer than I thought. It's now the 5th of November. There you go. I should say there are other managerial moves to tell you about as well, just before I go. Uh, David Artel uh, has been sacked by Cardiff City. And following our win uh, over Aston Villa, Ralph Hessenhudel uh, was sacked, uh, shockingly, by Villa. So clearly not a fan of where he got them to. Uh, although I say that, they are in 10th. And they're only two points off the playoffs. Bit harsh, to be honest. I also made a slight mistake with Dover. Now, I thought that uh, Spenny the Penny was coming in to save them from relegation. Not the case. They're actually 13th in the Vanarama National League South, but they were predicted second. No wonder they've turned uh, to my assistant, Spenny, to try and uh, get them back up there. So he's actually my second assistant to get a full-time managerial role the first was obviously Ken McKenna. Uh, now, where did Kenny McKenna turn up? Is he Kenny McKenna in the game or is he Ken? I should know this as AFC Fouled Researcher. Uh, he's still with Barnett uh, currently. So he took the job there uh, with the Bees. I think they're the Bees. I'm trying to remember because we've seen, uh, I've been playing a, a, a women's database recently and the London Bees are certainly in there all of whom have uh, the Barnet badge ah they're 12th in the National League right okay interesting I wonder who's doing uh, well in the National League at the minute we're just going to have a side uh, go here Exeter isn't that where he turned up first I'm sure that you got the job at Exeter did you? Milestones. 
He did get the job at Exeter. Right, okay. I wasn't uh, losing my marbles here. So, yes, he left us. He was our assistant manager. under. Uh, he was actually assistant under Jim Bentley at Morecambe for many years before coming to finals. Um, now, he has actually left the club. Uh, he's been replaced by a chap called Nick Chadwick. Nick Chadwick. Something Chadwick. Not a good day. Uh, he then turned up at Exeter. Stayed there for almost a year. Before he was sacked, four months later, he is now at Barnet. Right, okay. I did think that uh, he was there. Uh, Norwich dominate the game. I can't really argue with that. Uh, Sheldon Green suffering that pull grind. <laughs> there you go. Five to six days. Injured getting tackled. I bet he was. Uh, uh, Doyle raises fitness concerns. What's the problem with you? The Groot and Fia Beamer, a little jaded, could do with the rest. Well, they're going to get one. They're going to get a rest. Because we have 51 days, you can see it's off the screen there, until we play Brentford. So, shall we attend the uh, the old press conference here? Notions of relegation are a distant memory. Where the file go from here? Well, I'm proud of the club for what they've achieved. Well, let's go full passion on this one. Matthew Jones. Uh, you must have reasons to be happy. Hmm. Not really. I mean, a loss is a loss. You know, second is first of the losers. Uh, I'm going to calmly say that uh, a defeat is still a defeat. I totally agree with that. Why have you adopted this particular tackler, tactical approach? It's the players that we've got. It suits the players. There you go. What are my thoughts on Sheffield Wednesday parting company with Filippo Inzaghi? Oh, Pippo. You've been sacked, son. Uh, I'm going to go passion. I'm a, I have a great deal of sympathy for him. I mean, managers just get sacked left, right and centre. Cardiff have been a surprise story. For all the wrong reasons, I was going to say Blackpool at the bottom, aren't they? I, I don't care, to be honest. I'm going to just... I'm going to cautiously, which I never do actually, I never click caution. I don't know anything to say on that one. And there you go. That is, uh, that's all for today, in terms of the press conference. Targeting, oh brilliant. I'm less happy with David. Okay, I think we're going to go full Harry Redknapp on uh, Frank Lampard here. I completely believe in David. I mean, let's not be hasty. I do believe fully in David, but uh, he will come good. Let's say that one. There you go. So, interestingly then, some more jobs on the market here in the uh, Skybet Championship. Middlesbrough, Hull, Cardiff, Villa and Sheffield Wednesday. Meanwhile, West Ham is available in the Premier League. 20th. That's interesting. Job security. I bet there are others in our league as well. Can I see just our league? One by one, sure, take them off. Who else is insecure? I mean, plenty of them are insecure. Okay, I seem to have left ones on there. What have I done here? Nations. Oh, no. It's going so well, this episode. Right, very insecure. Brentford. Right, okay, they're our next opponents. Interesting that. They are the next cab off the rank. And as you can see, there are quite an eclectic group of managers. Nigel Atkins uh, jumped ship from Blackpool to Birmingham. Mark Hughes is back at Blackburn. Well done to him. Willie Sagnol, former Bayern Munich uh, legend. He is there at Crystal Palace. Mauricio Pellegrino, Forrest. Slaven Bilic at Preston, we know that. Nigel Pearson's recent appointment at QPR. Chris Hewton, still at West Brom. Still. And there at Stoke, John Dal Thomason. Wow. Luciano Spalletti, Bristol. It is quite a star-studded lineup, isn't it? Chris Wilder at Millwall. Sat there next to Ian Holloway. Absolutely right. Good buddies, I would imagine. Paul Hurst is the new manager at Blackpool. And that is it for today's double episode. Join me next time when I think we're going to play Brentford. I think we are. I haven't checked my notes, but it'll be episode 69 
and that will be a big one. I'll see you again then. Thank you for watching.